I've had a wacky little idea for a coding project. Can I port the iconic chip music from the Commodore 64 game Commando to the arcade hardware of the original game it's based on? To give a quick introduction, Commando was a run-and-gun vertical shooter released by Capcom in 1985. The game was a big hit at arcades and quickly got licensed out for ports to home computers. Writing those ports, though, would have been quite a challenge. This arcade board was designed to play that one game. Nothing else ever ran on it, and trying to mimic it on a generation of home computers that would have been three years old by that point was going to involve a whole lot of compromise. But the C64 version was definitely one of the better ones. Its action was fast and smooth, its gameplay responsive, its sprites abundant, and in one respect, I'd claim it actually outshone the arcade original. And that was its soundtrack. Composed and coded by legendary chip musician Rob Hubbard, the game's score borrows, I think, just three excerpts from the original, weaving them into a four minute long epic that just truly gets carried away. I think it's fair to say that Rob was behind some of the most celebrated pieces of music for a computer celebrated for its music, with the Commando soundtrack being one of his most well-known. But if you don't know it, let me share a little taste of how it sounds and how that compares to the arcade. That's a quick taste of how they're similar and different, at least for those pieces of Rob's music that were inspired by the original. But many bits weren't, including an epic guitar solo at the end of the gameplay song and an all-new high score tune, all of which I plan to get running on the arcade board. To give a little backstory, a few months ago I was curious how the code of Rob's music player works, and in finding out, I wrote myself a little web app that recreates many of his classic tunes on a browser. Among them was Commando's music. So I figured, if I can port this player to JavaScript, can I also port it to the original arcade hardware? Right now, it's 2025, meaning this little board is celebrating its 40th birthday. And what better way to indulge its looming midlife crisis than to give it a little makeover? Specifically, I'll be crafting a new ROM that I can plug into it so I can play the original arcade game to the accompaniment of the C64 conversion's awesome soundtrack. I realize this is not going to be a small project. These two pieces of hardware have nothing in common. Different CPUs, different sound chips, even different video refresh rates. I'm going to be writing a whole music player from scratch for a platform I'm not even familiar with. But I think it's doable and I think it'll be an interesting journey to get there. To give you a taste of what I think's going to be in store, expect to see me tinkering with the source code of emulators, reverse engineering Capcom's original code, and writing and debugging a whole lot of assembler. I'll spare you the line-by-line -line commentary, but still, the project's going to spend many videos. And today's focus is getting to know the hardware. If I'm going to start writing code, I need to know what I'm writing for. What's actually on this board, how is it all wired up, and how is it all controlled by software? But also, how does any of that compare to what's on the Commodore? I have a little something that's going to help with that, so let me go fetch it. I'll be right back. And here it is. Can I present the Arcade Games Operator's Manual, or as Data East called it, the Instruction Manual. 
Data East, I should add, were the publishers of the US version of the game, which my board isn't. I have Capcom's international version, but I'm confident that it's at least the same hardware as evidenced by all of the Capcom logos throughout the schematics. Yes, the schematics. This manual, as is common for arcade games of that era, contains complete schematics for the logic boards, the power supply, and the monitor. And the section that we're interested in is on page 23. It spills over to page 24 for a sound amplifier and a couple of D2A converters. But what's on page 23 is the sound system. And it's essentially a whole computer system in its own right. It has a CPU, it has memory, it has sound generators, and it has I.O. As we'll see in a second, there's very little to connect all these to the outside world. So the CPU on this page is not the main CPU that's controlling gameplay. It's a dedicated CPU just for the sound system, and it has its own dedicated memory and sound chips that don't attach to anything else. In terms of connections for the sound system as a whole, there's only one set of outputs, which is the audio from two identical sound chips. All the other connections for this page are inputs. We've got a couple of reset lines, we've got a 3 MHz clock, and we've got a signal that controls interrupts for the sound CPU. But the really interesting ones are the set of inputs feeding into an 8-bit latch, mapping it into the main CPU's address space. You can think of this latch as a teeny tiny whiteboard, big enough to display just a single number. At any time, the sound CPU can choose to read that number. And at any time, the main CPU can choose to replace it. And this will be the communication channel by which the game tells the sound system what to do. And I'm confident of that because it has to be. There are no other signals going into or out of this page. And as communication channels go, this one is very one way. Not only can the sound CPU not send data back to the main CPU, it can't even tell it that it's even read what that CPU just wrote. And because of that, I'd expect this channel's data rate to be pretty slow. I don't think it's carrying low-level sound data. I suspect it's just for high-level commands, like play a sound effect or start a piece of music. And if I'm right about that, it means that the ROM chip in the sound system should contain all of the code and all of the data for all of the music and all of the sound effects. So the whole goal of my little project will be to replace what's on that one chip. Let's take a step back and put all of this into context. I'm sure there's going to be a whole load of challenges down the road with this project, but resource availability ain't going to be one of them. That chip that I said would have all of the code and data on it, it's a 16K EEPROM, which is four times the size of the sound module from the Commodore 64 game. As for RAM, this chip next to it has a capacity of 2K, and from what I remember of the C64 code, it uses something like 70 bytes. So we've got 30 times that. Yeah, I think we're going to be okay. As for compute resources, the arcade sound hardware has a 3 MHz Z80. That compares to the Commodore 64's 1 MHz 6510, which might seem like quite a difference, but in reality, the 6510 achieves about three times as much in any one cycle as the Z80. So the clock difference is going to be inconsequential. What is consequential, though, is that the C64 CPU isn't just controlling sound chips. It's also running a fast-paced shooting game with smooth scrolling and sprite multiplexing, all of which is going to place a considerable drain on resources. But if we're comparing Capcom's apples to Commodore's oranges, there's one last big thing to consider, and that's the sound chips. That's going to be a little tricky, because these are very different chips. So let's unpack them. And since the Commodore 64 is setting the baseline for this project, let's start with a quick introduction to what its sound chip is all about. <laughs> The Commodore 64 sound chip is a three-channel synthesizer it calls the Sound Interface Device, or SID. Let's take a tour of its features, starting with timbre. 
Each of the channels can select from four different waveforms. There's a triangle wave, a sawtooth wave, a pulse wave, and noise. Of these, the pulse wave is kind of special. You can use it to generate a square wave, that classic sound of the 8-bit generation, but the width of the pulse can be whatever you like, with each channel taking a 12-bit parameter to control it super precisely. Moving on to pitch, each of the channels can range from 0 Hz up to around the top end of a piano keyboard. But what's relevant is the resolution, and for the SID, that's a 16-bit value directly proportional to frequency. For volume, the SID has a global loudness setting, which is a 4-bit value, and which people soon learned could be manipulated at high frequency to affect sound samples. The volume of the three sound channels, however, they can't be directly controlled. Instead, each has an ADSR envelope generator, where a set of four parameters determines how the volume of a note should scale over time. Set these up, and the SID then takes care of the rest, as you key on and key off the note. I would say that's all the core functionality, but there's a few extra features in there too, like filtering, synchronization, and ring modulation. These are fairly sophisticated, and I'll skip the details for a couple of reasons. One is that if the chip I'll be emulating this on doesn't natively support them, I'm doubtful that I'll be able to implement them. And the other is that I never did put them into that SID emulator I wrote in JavaScript, and the commando music sounds... I'd say okay on that. So that's the SID. Let me introduce now the chip that we'll use to impersonate it on the Commando hardware, which is the YM2203, which Yamaha dubbed the OPN. I wish I had more information about this one. Sadly, all I have is the data sheet. And data sheets are really just marketing documents. They're just technical enough to help you decide if you might want to buy the thing. And for simple chips, that's often enough. But the OPN is not a simple chip. It's really two different sound chips in one, full of minty freshness yet bursting with real fruit flavor. The OPN uses a common set of registers to access two completely unrelated sound cores from different periods in history. Its real fruit flavor is effectively General Instruments AY38910, that thing's been around since 1978, and was ubiquitous in arcade and home hardware for many, many years. They called it the Programmable Sound Generator, and while many still refer to it as the PSG, that term became a generic catch-all for sound chips, so I'll stick with calling it the AY from now on. However, you should know about a Yamaha clone of the AY, labeled the YM2149F, which featured in quite a number of arcade games, as well as, astonishingly given its age at the time, the Atari ST computer. Yamaha referred to that one as the SSG, a term I expect I'll be using a lot in future, because it's specifically that chip silicon that brought the real fruit flavor to Commando's OPN. Its minty freshness, on the other hand, comes from an FM synthesizer, which would have been leading edge tech by comparison. I don't know Yamaha's motivation for combining such different sound cores onto a single chip, but my personal theory is that it was made for MSX licensees, so they could sell premium home computers with FM sound that were still backwards compatible with the MSX standard. But I have zero evidence to back that up, and no such computers seem to exist. Instead, the OPN's niche ended up being in arcade hardware, being used in dozens of games from most of the major manufacturers of the time. So, does Commando use both cores of these two chips? And if so, what for? That I'll want to find out pretty soon. But first, let's compare the capabilities of each to the Commodore 64's SID. Starting with the SSG core, that one's a clone of the AY, and that I do have the manual for. It was easy to find, it's relatively small, and I think I've got a good handle on it. Here's what I've learned. Like the SID, the AY will play three simultaneous voices. Only these ones are more limited. It can't play triangle waves, 
it can't play sawtooth waves. It can play pulse waves, so long as they're square waves. The frequency control for them is 12 bits per channel, so 1 16th of the precision of the Commodore SID. The volume control is 4 bits per channel, which you can control directly on this chip, though it supports envelopes too. More on that in a second. It'll play noise, but with some big caveats. For one, the noise pitch value is only 5 bits wide, so that's 2,000 times less precise than the SID. But more seriously, it's not a per channel value. It's one global noise generator, which each channel can choose whether to be broadcast. As for the volume envelopes, they're really weird. I have no idea what GI intended for these ones, and they certainly don't take the opportunity to tell you in the manual. You could possibly achieve an ADSR envelope out of them, but you'd have to switch between its different phases manually, with a very precise timing. And more problematically, like with noise, the envelope generator is global. Each channel can choose to opt into it, but if it does, it could be marching to the beat of somebody else's drum. I'm really not sure where they were going with that. If they expected you to use one chip for each note that required an independent envelope, then you'd be needing a lot of chips for polyphony. That said, if you ever heard Gyrus from Konami, it had a pretty great soundtrack, but that game used five of these chips, so maybe. Anyway, that's everything the AY can do, at least in terms of sound. And General Instruments AY is Yamaha's SSG. And Yamaha's SSG is the real fruit flavor bursting into Commando's OPN. I'd like to talk now about its minty freshness, which is the FM synthesizer. But I don't have much to go on. As I said, I couldn't source the manual for the OPN. I know there is one, and I mean one, which is in a museum in the outskirts of Tokyo. Those who have seen it speak of its profound wisdom, but it has yet to be made available online. And without it, the register map that I see in the datasheet really isn't enough. But I don't think that's the end of the line. Yamaha made a whole bunch of FM chips, and at some later point, I'll try scour the documentation for those to see if anything helps with the OPN. Until then, the datasheet does tell me that, like the SID, the FM core outputs three simultaneous voices. And Wikipedia will tell you that those voices are constructed from four operator frequency modulation and have built-in ADSR envelopes. But how those operators and envelopes are configured is a mystery. All I have in the datasheet is register names and a few equations on frequency modulation in general, with the only lead to go on being a casual reference to Bessel functions. <laughs> and if I've got to wrap my head around those to make SID-like sounds in FM, then this could be a very long project. I don't have prior experience programming FM, and I'll have to learn it at some point, but I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. For now, I think we've learned as much from Commando's hardware as we're going to from just reading the documentation. To make some progress, I want to see it in action. I want to watch how it interacts with software, and I want to poke it around to see if I can make it squeak. And that will be next time. Come join me as I start the journey of reverse engineering. I'll be getting to the bottom of how the sound system software works and how my new music player can integrate with the existing effects engine. Until then, thank you for watching, and please, do continue.